Hello, welcome to Sun Talks, a podcast by ISSC. In this podcast, we'll be talking about international student life and international community here at ASU. I'm your host, Sukrit. Welcome to the podcast. Let's get started. Today, we're joined by Haley, who's the manager of International Graduate Advocacy Initiatives, and Shabir, who's the International Graduate Advocacy Assistant. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Good job with that. We've got long titles. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you guys have been around with ISSE for around two, three years now? Yeah. Two years and a little bit for me. And Yeah, same. About one and a half years, I would say. I started in summer of 2022. Mm-hmm. Shabir, though, started a little earlier as a volunteer, so he mm-hmm. was official but not paid. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Haley, you're known for your events. So I feel like when, as an international student, when I go and talk to other international students, they're just like, um, I, if I ask about any event about ISSC, they're like, oh, is Haley doing it? <laughs> so yes. you're popular with students. <laughs> <sighs> you know, I'm peaking right now. <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> but yes, I do do a lot of events. Mm-hmm. Um so if you haven't gone to one, you should. <laughs> so when you when you do these events, when you plan these events, what goals do you have in mind? How do you plan them out? And is there like, like is it like a general set of goals or do you have it different for each event? How does it work? Yeah. So Shabir and I always have second motives. We even have a fun little spreadsheet that Shabir spends more time on than me um, that helps label what the event's intent is. So we've got like a secret meeting, right? Um, And you can probably think of quite a few examples. One, I always, it's our classic example, game night Mm -hmm. every second Wednesday of every month, even winter and summer. We have board games at the library and pizza or snacks. Um, and that's not just because we want to build community Mm -hmm. and have fun and offer free food, which we do. Building (laughs) community is one of our sneaky goals. Um, but the other one is to share resources. So instead of making a really boring PowerPoint and trying to tell people like the library is cool, it is cool. Um, but instead of telling people that we show them that, so we really try to have our events interact with resources on campus that students ideally will use or should know about, um, and we try to make it a little bit more engaging. I think right. one interesting thing that you told me when we were chatting is that you can rent these board games yeah. from the library. I didn't know that. So yeah. when yeah, you said it, I was like, what? Even it took me a, a couple of months <laughs> to <laughs> know that after we had uh, started having game nights and when students started returning mm. the games after the game night at, towards the end of the event, uh, they just asked us, hey, do you want to take this home? And I was like, wait, can we do that? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right. So Absolutely. I was surprised. I was really shocked. And I was like, what? Yeah, I didn't know that. So like now if I want to just get it for like a day, I don't have to go to Walmart, buy it and then return it again. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> none of that. It's not just games. <laughs> it's not just games. You can also take a camera. You can also take VR sets. They have a lot of stuff in VR library. sets? Exactly. Yeah. You can take They even have a seed catalog. You don't have to return the seeds, though. You, you go home <laughs> and grab them. Yeah. But they return the seed with the plant. <laughs> yeah. And some of our, our events are a little bit more obvious. Our career development mm-hmm. events are definitely related to that. But again, we don't host them. We, mm-hmm. well, we technically host them, but we don't run mm-hmm. them. So then mm-hmm. we have career services come in and run them. So again, it's connecting you to the resources. They might have a good insight, you know, PowerPoint presentation, workshop, interactive, whatever they choose. But again, ideally you get to meet the people who work there um, and break down some barriers, feel more comfortable. You're like, oh, I know Bon, I know Aziz. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll sign up to meet with them for a one-on-one appointment to review my resume because I went to the workshop. I understand some of my issues. I don't remember everything. Mm -hmm. I feel comfortable now going to meet with one of them. So basically like a middleman from the students and the resources. So you can yeah. help them navigate. This, exactly. this yeah. ages me, but it's like the yellow pages. So a phone book at the oh end of God. a phone book, you know, <laughs> the yellow pages you go to find where people live, where their phone number. So we're like the yellow pages for the university. But yeah, actually never used more, yellow book. Yeah, it ages me. I know. Um, <laughs> but it's a bit more interactive. So obviously you have all these events and you have these um, hidden meanings or hidden goals, as you said, for these events. Uh, how do you like diversify the events? So you have these goals, you have the resources, but how do you attract all international student population and domestic? Because I've seen a mix of everything. So I, like, what's the secret? So for um, each event that we organize, we try to collaborate with certain organizations depending on 
the event and the motto of the event, the reason as to why we are organizing. For example, for fun events, uh, we have a karaoke night that we organized during Hispanic and Heritage Month. We had it last time during Hispanic Month. So we tried to organize that with a club named El Concilio mm -hmm. and also HBSA, which is, it stands for uh, Hispanic Students Business Association. Okay. So we try to we try to collaborate with certain organizations depending on the event. Then we also had, I'm sorry, I forgot, uh, during International Education Week, we had uh, the International Fashion Prom. Yeah. For which we all collaborated with CIS, the Coalition of International Students, mm. which is also, we. that's how we kind of promote mm -hmm. our event and it helps us both ways. Actually, speaking of this, I remember with the in one of the previous podcasts with Daniel, he said that one of the goals of ICC is to make sure that these clubs also have the support of a department to actually like you know market and like showcase these international cultural events so i think you guys are doing a huge part in that well we definitely really try you know and if your club if you're in a club and you want to be partners with us just email me um collaboration as shabir said is huge and even um we have uh volunteer groups that have like planning committees over mm -hmm. our events so then it's not just me outreaching to people but we also have you know, six to eight to 12 other students that actively reach out to their student population and network. Um, but we do target, exactly. as Shabir said, we definitely target groups to be like, hey, we want you involved because some are more easy. Shabir is the president of uh, CIS, so I'm cheating. So I, I'm just like, all right, Shabir, is CIS joining? And he's like, yes. <laughs> um, so sometimes it's easier than others. And so that's why we, we might target a certain group because we haven't heard from them in a while. So we mm. really try to get them involved. Um, and we do look at our populations mm -hmm. and we think about that. Um, and we think about making sure we do invite everyone. Not everyone shows up um, or responds, they're busy. That's totally fine. I'm not mm. that cool to everyone. <laughs> um, but at least we really try to make the invitation and it known that everyone really is welcome. Okay. And we are trying to show diversity here. So if you are one, the only person from your country, we still want you to come and feel welcome yeah. and, <laughs> and we show have, yourself off. Yeah, right. So obviously you do a lot of these events um, and these events require a lot of planning. Um, and you have, I think out of all the events I've seen, you guys have like the highest number of volunteers who help out. You have committees and all of that. And yeah, there is the aspect of like, you know, by volunteering you can add something to your resume. But what's the other reason? Because I've never seen volunteers being this active and, ha and ha genuinely having so much fun. <laughs> Yes. when doing these exactly. events. So what's the reasoning behind that? Why are these committees there and how does it work? Why, like, why did you start this program of like having so many volunteers? Well, honestly, um, when Haley started this uh, one and a half, two years back, she, we, she started it with three volunteers, including me. Wow. I was one <laughs> of the three and now currently we have 160 I'm sorry, currently for so this you, you went from three to 160 in two years? <laughs> well, two I had years. just that started. Exactly. So it was just the beginning of the program mm -hmm. and it has gone well. It has gone really well. My <laughs> God, okay. <laughs> in the last three semesters, we have had volunteer meetings every month. Oh, wow. During the semester, just to check in, just to explain the tasks, to make it easier for them. Mm -hmm. it, the, entire, the whole point of having this volunteer uh, thing is to be keep it meaningful mm -hmm. for, for both ways. And they, for all the students to have some, get some student on-campus experience as well as socialize, make international connections. Mm -hmm. We're all international students. That's the whole point, apart from making resume. But overall, mm -hmm. it is definitely beneficial for a student because they put something on their resume that is on-campus experience that's really helpful while getting on-campus jobs, and many of them. Yeah, and we really try to make it meaningful for people. So it exactly. is actually kind of a lot of work for us <laughs> to organize it. Um, I don't know if it's less work to have the help, um, but it's a better program for it, right? So mm -hmm. yes, it helps us have... Honestly, I think better events because they're planned by students. Mm -hmm. So then the events are a little bit more fun. Yeah. And their insights. Yeah. And yeah. Shabir mentioned it's community building. So we work hard. That's why I like <laughs> Shabir as my student <laughs> worker. He knows how to work hard. But uh, we like to have fun. It is no fun to work hard if you're not having fun. Um, so we try to make sure that it's a really engaging, fun environment, mm -hmm. that people make friends. But I do think we really push it as that career development. Um, I know that seems like a lame side of it, but students can pick their position so they can have um, the, you know, budget assistant for an event or lead budget organizer. I don't know. Student, we get, let students pick their names. Um, mm -hmm. And if it's a skill they want to build, then it provides a space for them to build it. Or 
if it's a skill they want to show off, it provides a, like a real space to actually have an example. Mm -hmm. um, and something that we're trying to constantly do is improve our program. So hopefully next semester we actually have more professional trainings for our volunteers. So that way they can be certified or say that they took this class or course or workshop that actually shows that they were trained in a skill. I feel like I'm also, as when I was like when you were talking, I realized that I'm also like guilty, not guilty, but I was like, I'm part of this. Like I never realized that I was. You were a volunteer. Yeah, exactly. I was a volunteer, but I never realized how much volunteering with you guys actually changed my experience with ASU. Because I think Indeed. when I started volunteering, Shabir was the one who said, hey, there's a position open at ISSC. You should apply. And I was a reference. Exactly. And I said nice things. <laughs> <laughs> so me getting in was because of this volunteering. And I yeah. feel like I have friends who are now currently volunteers who share the same sentiment as me about like how this volunteering program has literally just. And something that we've done a, a, a lot more this year, this was one of our improvements this semester is that it's, um, I almost said like a friend to volunteer, but no, we like share our volunteers. So mm -hmm. with our departments that we're most friendly with, that work with and for our international students the most, mm -hmm. that should have more international student insight we share our volunteers there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working f or volunteering for the ICC is great, and it worked for <laughs> you too. Yeah. You both got jobs. <laughs> but I don't have, like, 85 assistants, <laughs> I wish. Um, and I always wish I could pay my volunteers, but I can't, and I cannot hire all of them. <laughs> so the reality of it is I, you know, I found that as a limitation. Mm -hmm. And I can give references and I can tell the departments that I work with how great students are. And that does result in students getting hired. Mm, but really give some really good references. <laughs> I mean, obviously, look at me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I got this job. <laughs> but I can't necessarily get students hired always, right, with mm -hmm. everyone else. But it helps even more than just my references um, to let students go volunteer with someone. Mm -hmm. And then that someone gets to know them. And then they're like, I always get like, gosh, your volunteers are best like this kid is the best i'm like well he's up for hiring or they're <laughs> up for hiring um so hopefully that you know continues to increase the benefits for students to i get. mean mm -hmm. I, I feel like along with the benefits for student there's also benefit as the international community because i feel like oh yeah the students when they come to asu they they're stuck in like the international community they want to go out but they, they don't know how Mm -hmm. So by collaborating with all these departments and like meeting new people, I think that's like helpful. And then even they're exposed to now international students and, you know, international students, like what they want, what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a huge thing. <laughs> yeah. And it like it's internationalizes our our campus. Right. So yeah, it gets yeah. our international students more involved, ingrained in other departments and not just the International Student Scholar Center. Right. Exactly, like yeah. that's for yeah. all of our international students. That's great. We should be good at hanging out with everyone that's exactly. international. Yeah. And the best part about volunteer, uh, our program is that the students love volunteering. They always come back every semester, they sign up mm -hmm. volunteering. So this, just for example, I sent out um, an email to sign up for the next semester mm -hmm. like for just to be ready for now. And within two days, I sent it, I sent out the um, email to the same volunteers that we had in the last semester. That is mm -hmm. fall. And we had 52 signups within two days. So that is how interested amazing. they During the finals. <laughs> during, <laughs> during finals, <laughs> considering it's an unpaid position, but still, they love volunteering. They love I mean, socializing, maybe. I mean, so with socializing, so what do you have any stories? Do you have any student experiences which the volunteers have shared with you about your events? It doesn't even have to be the volunteers. So like attendees who have come and like shared stories or something that you guys might have. I do have one student that we have an international story slam night. Mm -hmm. Um, where students and staff actually can come tell stories that are just about being in an international world. Mm -hmm. So it does invite kind of also the domestic students, if they've studied abroad or if they have a funny experience in class, having some cultural differences with someone. Um, and it is funny, and it, it's, you know, you share a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And then there's a group of 80, 90 people that half of them are like, I've gone through the same thing. So you feel a little less alone. Yeah. It's fun. It's Very silly. Related. It lightens up some challenges that a lot of students share. But one of our students that um, was just an attendee mm -hmm. came and shared a really intense, hard story mm -hmm. um, and then became a volunteer after that because oh. she was like, wow, like this kind of thing is what I want to invest my time in. Mm -hmm. um, and now is really engaged and very involved with all of our programs um, which is really neat to see. So it goes both ways. So sometimes students come to the event and are like, this is cool. Mm -hmm. I want to get more involved. I want this 
this is very meaningful and it impacts me. So how can I engage in more activities that are beneficial for me emotionally, socially, professionally, whatever? Speaking of International Story Slam Night, I think that's one of my favorite events. Um, I remember that I have, so I have stage fear, but I il- recently I've been like getting out there doing it. But the one event that actually made me stalk was the Story Slam Night. Yes. And then I was explaining about how once I came to ASU, I still felt like it was a mini India. <laughs> And I remember the entire audience was just laughing. And I was like, yes, I appreciate the laughter. <laughs> yeah. Extremely relatable stories that we had. But <laughs> interestingly, we had also started uh, with Story Slam Nights being a memorial union in a big event in our ballroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then we sto- slowly understood, Haley understood that it's just difficult for students to come up on stage in front of people when it's a big room. Mm-hmm. And that is when we decided to have all the rest of the Story Slam Nights and SSV Amphitheater. I feel like the amphitheater is an amazing space to do it's it. It's really, yeah. It's, yeah. Really cool. it's not that amazing of a space other than for that event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for that event, it's when you cozy. stand. Yeah. Yeah. But I it mean, still creates a stage, right? So it's still a stage, mm-hmm. but it's like a small stage. And it's not intimidating because no. when you're in the MU, the stage is like higher. Yeah. You feel like you're talking to an audience, mm-hmm. but when yeah. you're down there, it's like you're looking at everyone. So it, so feels yeah. like it just feels like a campfire. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It feels yeah, comforting. It does yes. feel like a campfire. Um, yeah. It's funny. One time we had an event. We, we didn't always do it on a stage, but it was an MU. And one time the only room was open was like a full on theater with like screwed in seats and a stage. And no one, like three people went up on stage. And then I was like, all right, I guess the event closes early and we can just hang out. And then the, someone took the mic and everyone told a story, but like in a circle around all of the permanent oh. chairs. And it was so weird. But it was, <laughs> when I was like, okay, point taken, never have a stage. Um, <laughs> not for this event. On I, feedback. But yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel mm-hmm. like whole point of your events is also like you want to build a sense of community and not yeah. have it as like a I mean I know that it's called an event but you don't want to label it as an event event you want to call it like you no know, a gathering maybe yeah well <laughs> it's like everything that we do we plant um volunteers to be friendly I mean they're naturally friendly mm-hmm. but some of our volunteers are just supposed to attend and engage and be engaging and friendly in different ways for different events like the whole point of our events is for anyone to come and feel welcome. Mm-hmm. That really is like, I, I don't care what you learn. Ideally you learn something and you take something valuable away, but you should feel like you're included. And because I feel like you're for attendees to are. see the organizers themselves get engaged. For example, in the Thanksgiving event that we did, I think last year, mm-hmm. when we did that whole um, tissue box with feathers inside. You know, like shake <laughs> your shake, yeah. sh- tail shaking feathers it. out. <laughs> <laughs> shaking it. That was yeah. that was amazing. That was I feel hilarious. like that was a oh. whole. I mean, if I took myself too seriously, it's not fun. Yeah. You know, you, you, I'm not here to like be something better than anyone else. Everyone is very equal. I think um, you you get involved so much and you have fun yourself. I worked I think, hard putting these together. We worked hard. I'm gonna enjoy myself. So that's like that's Thank something you. that actually that's what motivated me to go tell that story, yeah. play the games. You know, we deserve this. Yeah. After going with to all the classes in the morning, students deserve it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At night, go to fun events, have, we can't make those serious, but yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah, and if we're going to tell you resources and try to help you out, we're not going to, we're tr- going to try not to be boring. We exactly. try very hard to it's not like, be boring. Like example, I think the one of the most interesting ways that you actually shared resources, this was, this was like Tempe resources, like way to go to Tempe, which bus to take. The way you did that with the Papa Go hike was interesting because you made the students also like, Bike use, with you. Okay, yeah. not made. Use um, if they want right. to, but also like take the bus or if they want to bike, they can yeah. bike. So that was interesting because the students actually bike to Papago, and as they did it, they went around. Tempe. I tour guided exactly. Yes, exactly. I'm a bit of a tour guide on my events, it was, and, and then they got to see <laughs> the town lake and all that. It was mm-hmm. so fun. And then, well, mm-hmm. obviously, after go to Papago, yeah, they, yeah, yeah they do have several options of going as well. It's not just biking. There are other student workers and volunteers who help them go through the pub with the bus mm-hmm. or they use the Valley Metro, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a light rail. So, so like sometimes ways. we had like a potluck there. We went to the zoo. We've done all oh, of those. Like yeah. Shabir will go on the bus because he knows it better than me. Um, and then I'll bike and bring students there. Mm-hmm. So it is, you know, you, you don't come to the U.S. You don't move anywhere to just sit in your dorm room or your apartment. The whole point is to get involved with the community and so we really want to make it so you learn how to get involved yeah. with the community, how to use the bus, how to use your bike, how to use the bike lanes, hiking, biking, walking, scootering, whatever it is. We want to make sure we do it with you so then you can do it on your own. So you, obviously you have a lot of involvement when it comes to your events and how like the attendees get involved. But how do you get students to be involved 
before the event, like getting them to even attend the event, um, how how can they reach out to you? Because I know that there's a lot of students who don't know about the events, uh, other than your 200 plus volunteers. <laughs> but uh, how can they reach out to you? How can they like you have Instagram? But what other ways? What do you think the best way is? Email, you could, but that's mm -hmm. a lot. I have a lot of emails, so it might take me a few you days might, you to You might get, get a thousand emails yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> not everyone all at once. Um, but I, we do have a couple of ways to promote our event. Mm -hmm. like we usually post it on several sites, like Sun Devil Sync. We have a Canvas course that we promoted on. Then we have the outreach to different clubs, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. They promote it on their Instagram. We promote it on ISSC Instagram with us. Or whenever... We also have a feedback from that, after, not e after each event, but after certain events like big, big events. We have success at AC conference like, mm. so that we ask, how did you get to know about the event? So once we get all those results, and we use, try to use that next time. Okay, so this is definitely working. So we should post it a couple more times for that. But any other ways? Yeah, I mean, like, you should attend the events, right? Mm. So that's sometimes the biggest, ironic, that's like the biggest challenge is getting yourself there. Mm -hmm. But we're friendly. I mean... <laughs> I got him a shirt with a llama on it for today. I've yeah. got penguins it's on an, my an shirt. Interactive llama. It's an interactive llama. Wait, um, um, I got all of it. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, hopefully that softens <laughs> holidays, softens the blow of um, coming to hang out with us. We are friendly, so please do come. But as Shabir mentioned earlier, I think we have. This is not what I think. I think you mentioned it earlier. But we have <laughs> monthly volunteer meetings. Mm -hmm. So if you're even kind of curious of what that means, what's the level of involvement, how much do you need to know, you don't need to know anything. You just come. Yeah. Um, but it's we have... all about while organizing, how to playing games, you eat pizza, and that counts as volunteering. Yeah, <laughs> I already does. had a job on campus, but I used to do this just for this. Mm -hmm. I used to volunteer at ISSC because it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Because who would not like playing cricket? <laughs> like that. We did. <laughs> that was. Yeah, remember, that was you know, one of the events. Event? Yeah. Crazy. It was off campus. I mean, it was, it was on, on campus, campus, just far away. Far away. Yeah. yeah. It was on campus. But so really, it's just getting involved, going to our volunteer meetings. Mm -hmm. Sure, email us. We have a volunteer sign up form, or you can just come to the meetings. And then you get on our little group, our email list. Mm -hmm. um, it's a whole forum you use, you interact with, you sign up for the events that you want to work at, the committees you want to get involved in, and you get to pick. Um, but it's just a matter of coming. But you also don't have to volunteer. That's the biggest issue with all our volunteers. Every time they come to an event, they feel like they have to work for me. Mm -hmm. um, so you can volunteer and then go to another event and not volunteer. Exactly. So just come and chill. Just right. come and yeah. have fun. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure you do both um, or at least come and have fun. That's the biggest thing. Check out our Instagram. I know that sounds silly. Um, <laughs> that's very up to date. If there's any mistakes, I'll fix it there. Um, <laughs> check your emails. Trust the Instagram. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. so, yeah. Uh, but what are the new things coming up? What do you have planned? Um, because, yeah, students can reach out to you, and we spoke about a lot of previous events, but what's coming? What's new? We have some of the same events coming. Repetitive. Classics. The classics. You know. The OGs. <laughs> you can't get rid of ones that people really like. Um, yeah, but all those events we try to, like, up it up a notch, like yes. mm -hmm. based on the feedback that we received from the previous semesters, and we try to change it and add stuff to it. Yeah, but I feel like the the pizza must be a constant. <laughs> it should be there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it should be, but it will be there at many of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Not the pizza. <laughs> We'll have other food. We've been upping exactly. our other oh, food yeah, yeah. too, which is good. No, <laughs> we need the pizza. Itself. Make you bond over <laughs> pizza. What's coming up next semester? And do you guys have anything new planned out? What's happening? So we do a lot of updates. We try to make everything better, mm -hmm. and we have new students volunteer, new student volunteering. I feel, like it, I feel like it's hard for you to make things better because already it's at peak. Well, we just bring <laughs> new people in and that way like every planning committee can do whatever they want. So mm -hmm. it's always slightly different, which is nice because then it's like, you know, what people want to do right then and there. Mm -hmm. So even if we do older things, they're the classics. There's the things that people love. Um, but we do have some newer things. We started a pilot this fall, so it really will kick off in spring, but we have a campus course. It's a resource hub for international students. It was requested by international students created by international students with constant feedback like weekend itinerary, <laughs> trip planning, and we're going to have student writing um, food reviews on different mm -hmm. restaurants and stuff. But it also tells you about some information like we have a thrifting event. Maybe you don't know what that is. So it comes off on your Canvas course, Learn Arizona, 
what's thrifting with tons of information, videos, interactive quizzes. It's very interactive. Yeah. And then we'll have an event that follows. But it also will have like details on how to use transportation and where do you find tutoring centers and all the other important stuff, but also some fun so, interactive So you're bringing cool stuff. the fun into the Canvas courses. And to the internet. So I don't have to sit <laughs> on Zoom talking to a crowd of 40 people on Zoom in black boxes. And I'm all by myself in an echo chamber. I don't That's like this. That's the big one. Okay. Awesome. But what else? So Shabir, what else are we doing? There's other things Apart than just the a Canvas, Canvas course. course. We have a lot of repetitive events that uh, Hilly mentioned that we have. Like Global Friends, we have uh, the International Fashion from Karaoke Night. And yeah. uh, international story slam night. I feel so like these them. events should never be even considered being removed. I they're, know. They're, no they're too fun. They're too much fun. <laughs> and too many people come and have a good time. Exactly. And yeah. so I'm not going to get rid of something that people love. I mean, to be fair, I've been to one karaoke night and then the Only? food. Only? Well, I mean. Wow. I, mm, okay, don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my favorite, the, that event, like that's such amazing food. I mm -hmm. loved it. I think we do repeat that menu because it's good. <laughs> I always use that okay, menu now, now at I'm gonna that come, karaoke I'm going to come more often. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, one thing I'm going to say is if you have an idea for an event or something you want to do, you just ask me or mm -hmm. join the volunteer committee and make your own event. Mm -hmm. um, so we really do try to make sure events are reflecting what students want to do. So that's why we'll repeat something because we have 400 students coming to it telling me how great it was. Mm -hmm. But if 20 people come and everyone's like, meh, why would we do that again? Yeah. Um, so and if there's something you want to do, let mm -hmm. us know. So we're about to run out of time, but, um, so any closing remarks, anything that you want to share before we wrap it up? Um, this has been a fun podcast. <laughs> um, nothing to wrap it up. Uh, I, when I joined ASU, I had one advice that I'd got from my senior mm -hmm. was to come out, get out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. try to get your ass to events, try to socialize and make connections with international students. There's nothing wrong, but same. International student connections really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Getting out of uh, my comfort zone, considering how in big of an introvert that I was. But now I feel like I don't know about... <clears throat> Currently, I feel like I He's have... He's blossomed. Now he can host events. Yeah, <laughs> hint, hint. very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, all thanks to uh, me socializing with and making some international connections, networking. But it has really helped. So that's what... that's one advice that I would like to give the incoming students as well. Yeah, get involved with us. I, I really care. Mm. Shabira really cares. We do care. Um, so we're, we're doing it for you. All of the students out there, um, it's very much from our hearts. <laughs> we think a lot about it, but it's definitely emotionally driven. Um, and so we, we just really hope you guys feel comfortable to come hang out with us, give us your feedback, get more involved, um, and be silly. <laughs> with us I'm silly sweater. Oh, I got Chill penguins on Christmas. my sweater <laughs> awesome okay thank you so much for coming and happy holidays happy, happy holidays, holidays. <laughs>